Canadian media outlets could soon be getting subsidies from the federal government. What up everyone, and in my next video I want to talk about the potential of media subsidies in Canada after an announcement by the federal government. So, before we get into the analysis, let's get right to the facts. Alright, so according to an article I found in the Winnipeg Free Press, the federal government is prepared to offer subsidies. These subsidies will be for subscriptions, donation to news media, as well as newsroom salaries. Now, not every outlet will qualify for the subsidies. A panel of journalists will determine who is qualified. Now, this was all announced by Finance Minister Bill Morneau on November 21st. The federal government is offering $565 million in subsidies over the next five years. It is set to begin in less than two months, January 1st, 2019, and it'll run until March 2024. Now, for the subscriptions part of the subsidy, this is a 15% tax credit to digital news media. Now, according to the article, this is meant to help legacy media transition from their current platform to a digital platform. This tax credit is meant to be temporary. Now moving to the labor subsidy, this will be a permanent tax credit. It is meant for the work done to produce original news content. So the salaries involved in the workers who produce are effectively an outlet's content. The last proposal would see, would see media outlets be able to receive charitable donations and thus they could write a tax receipt for the donation. So with the facts out of the way, I think now it's time to do a little bit of an analysis of what's going on here. Now, I first want to say that it is a very hard time for news media in general, whether it be print, radio, TV, effectively legacy media. There's not a lot of money to be made in the news. We it seems, at least here in Canada, I'm sure it's probably the same elsewhere, but at least in Canada, it seems at least a couple of times a year we'll hear stories of, or coverage of outlets and whatnot having to close their doors because they're just not profitable anymore. This is a real challenge that's facing media in this country, and it's something that's going to need to actually be addressed for sure. The problem is, though, what do you do? What can we actually do to properly fix this situation? When I first heard this, it was definitely a mixed bag. The first thing I thought of was, yes, outlets could use all the help they could get. But, how is this taxpayer responsibility? Why should this come from the government? I'm not entirely sure why that should happen. Now, the main reason I'm unsure why a government subsidy would be the best way to help fix or help mitigate a lot of the issues facing media is I honestly still feel that media themselves, the media itself, is responsible for the situation it's in. I think there's a real argument could be made that there are some outlets, some publications across various <laughs> across the TV, radio, print that quite frankly have refused to adapt to change. They're still operating as if it was 20 years ago. Or they're still operating as if a certain idea of how the internet would revolutionize their business 10 years ago, but didn't come to pass. It's as if... That is a huge problem. 
when something fails to evolve, it will eventually just die off. Another problem I have is some companies, some conglomerates have grown way too big. You look at a company like Post Media that has a very, their debt has been well documented. They're the owner of the most publications, at least in the English language media, in Canada. If you ask me, I have a feeling that, that company has grown way too big to the point where it will never be able to sustain itself. With decreased ad revenue, there is no way it'll make enough money to satisfy its debt and satisfy its overhead and make profit. I don't Personally, I don't understand it. That being said, I have not seen the company's finances, so I can't claim to be an expert, but I can't see how it's possible. And I think that should be a warning to, to any company that wants to grow that big. It, I don't see how it's worth owning so many properties when you're unable to sustain it or when it's unable to be sustained. Now, the next I think is the biggest issue as to why media is in the state that it's in and it's their own fault. And it's the practices they use. Practices used commonly. I am tired of hearing media play for a certain political side. Sure, you might be able to make money by pandering to a certain aisle on the political spectrum, but that's not objective news. When objectivity is thrown out the window, this is what we get, a media that nobody trusts. I think we, we in the media would be much more trusted if we stuck to objective facts, to report news objectively, to cr even if the objective facts go against the party that you play for, or the team you play for. If you want to align yourself to a certain point on the political spectrum, that's fine. But at least be willing to admit when that side is wrong. And I think there are too many outlets that don't do that. And that is part of the reason that nobody trusts the media. Another reason, how many times have you clicked on an article and read a headline? And then you read the story and go, that headline had nothing to do with this story. I've done that way too many times, and that turns me off outlets. I don't know how outlets are able to survive when they do practices like this. Misleading just for views. Whether you want to call that clickbait or whatever. And not everybody's guilty of this, but if you make a mistake, you need to make a correction. There are way too many outlets that do not do corrections. When you make a mistake, the best thing you can do is admit you were wrong and co correct your error. You will preserve at least a level of credibility and you can move on. You can recover from it. But because of these practices I've listed, Trust in the media is in the toilet, and this is what happens. We end up in situations where the industry is suffering to the point where we may need government subsidies. Now, a big problem I have with the subsidies is who's going to qualify? The only thing right now I could find is effectively that CBC of Enzo Canada is not going to qualify as it's the public broadcaster. But other than that, 
What's the criteria? Are the giant companies that are way too big to be sustainable, are they going to qualify? Is it just going to be small businesses? You know, sm small papers and communities, whether they be dailies or weeklies, whether they serve uh, big cities, small cities, small towns, even smaller communities. There needs to be for me to feel a lot more comfortable with this, there needs to be a lot more guidelines released to know who's going to qualify. Is deliberately partisan outlets, are they going to be qualified? Or is there going to have to be some kind of objectivity in your reputation? So all in all, as I said, I acknowledge that orange, my industry is in trouble. And there's going to be a time where it might be unrecognizable to what it is today. But with what I know, uh, I'm not sure these subsidies are really going to do anything unless media practices that are turning people away are changed. Anyway, I want to thank all of you for watching this video. If you like what you saw, please like the video. If you heard any points you'd like to continue talking about, you and you disagree with anything you agree with, consider leaving a comment. Let's continue the discussion. Also, consider subscribing. Once again, thank you for watching this video. Have yourself a good day.